Welcome back to your nightmares, my children. This is Mr. Midnight speaking. I welcome you all to my humble abode. Today, I will be sharing with you three scary stories that will frighten you to your core. So let's not waste time and let's begin. But before we do that, make sure you subscribe and like. Because if you don't, I will haunt you. So buckle up. And always remember, the darkness always follows. I will now leave you with my narrator. So enjoy. Number one. 4am fire. I live in an apartment building. I've been here for about two years. And my roommate and I have had very few scary experiences so far. Except for this one that happened last summer. It was around 4 in the morning when we are woken from a dead sleep by the fire alarms going off throughout our entire four-story apartment building. Seeing as this place is occupied mostly by seniors, we figured someone had left a pot on the stove again. I grumbled and blindly grabbed for a blanket. Last time, we had a false alarm. I was left shivering and barefoot on the sidewalk waiting for the fire department. And I wasn't about to let that happen again. My roommate and I put on our shoes. I grabbed my phone and keys and we poked our head out into the hallway. Nothing seemed off. The hall was empty no one else had come out of their apartments yet. Reluctantly, my roommate and I walked down the hall towards the lobby. We figured our neighbours would soon follow suit. It was only when we went through the lobby and out the front door that we realised something was actually wrong. A handful of people who had already come out of the building were running and shouting about how the building was actually on fire this time. We followed them around to the side of the building as more and more people fled in their pyjamas and to our horror we saw an apartment on the top floor belching out flames. People were frantic, searching for water, a ladder, anything. Some were remarked that there was a lady who lived in that apartment who had mobility issues and she needed to be rescued now and where the hell was the fire department? My roommate was quite disturbed by the whole scene so we decided to go back to the front of the building, away from the fire. On our way, we saw a guy jump off his balcony to the ground. He rolled when he landed but I think it still really hurt. Judging from how he sat on the grass and groaned for a while, he was lucky to be only be on the second floor. There was chaos, yelling, screaming and an odd mix of panic and disinterest, especially among the senior citizens who didn't want to leave the building because using the stairs was so difficult. The fire department arrived much quicker than they ever had before. Seeing as this was a real emergency, and it wasn't long before elderly ladies in nightgowns were being rescued via ladders and wheeled off to the hospital next door. At one point, the man who lived below the apartment on fire had a screaming episode at one of the landlords, the one that looked like a walking skeleton with an oxygen tank and a scooter. By the time the fire department got everything under control, it was around 6 or 7 am. The sun was up and people were beginning their morning commute. The fire department had blocked off our whole street, which must have been a pain, and the entire population of my building sat on the curb in pyjamas and blankets. Little kids, all people, broke college kids, kids, the works. The community really pulled together that morning. The whole public bus service gave us a couple buses to sit and warm up in instead of standing around on a chilly sidewalk. Paramedics handed out blankets and assessed injuries. The people in the surrounding houses were kind enough to bring us water and snacks. One lady brought a serving tray with mugs of tea from her own kitchen and offered it to anyone she could find. 
my mom came down to rescue my roommate and I, even though she lived an hour outside of town and hadn't even showered yet. She brought us breakfast and a change of clothes, as we didn't know when we'd be allowed back into the building. The most disturbing details of what had just taken place that morning came to us as we were waiting on the bus. Everyone was talking about the fire, of course, but one man had a particularly horrifying detail to add. He'd heard through the grapevine that the lady whose apartment caught fire never made it out the building. Sadly, we suspected as much, and her mobility issues and all, but there was more. The firefighters apparently found her in the hall. She had made it out of her apartment but couldn't escape the smoke. Whether she died from smoke inhalation or from burns, we aren't sure. But one thing that man said that sticks with me is that someone said that as they stood outside and watched the flames, they heard the woman screaming, Help me, I'm burning. I've always been afraid of burning to death and the idea that my neighbour may have been had such a horrifying end is deeply disturbing. I know the man who lived below her heard her screaming. He wouldn't stop talking about it. I think he ended up with a form of PTSD from this event and I don't blame him. We were all brought to a community centre where the fire department and emergency response volunteers helped bring some clarity to the situation and told us what to expect. Everyone was very kind and sympathetic to us. Whatever you needed, they provided for us. I think all of that is pretty standard procedure. But still, I was extremely thankful to the kindness of the volunteers, firefighters, paramedics and good Samaritans. It was pretty surreal to be in a situation like that. We had almost nothing on us. My roommate hadn't thought to grab her phone, so she had to borrow mine to let the family know she was okay. We had no money, no ID, none of the essentials, and we had no idea how long we would be homeless. I hadn't been so happy to have my mum with me in a long time. I felt like a scared little girl, even if I didn't show it. We were lucky. The fire happened on the opposite end of the building from us. Our unit was totally unaffected and we were one of the few allowed back into our apartment the same day. The building stuck of smoke for weeks. Even though the fire took place on the fourth floor in a single apartment, the damage was extensive. Even on the ground floor, the walls were blackened with ash. When they attempted to start fixing up the building, they found asbestos in the walls. A few people were forced to move out of their apartments and we're talking about people who have lived there for around 30 years. I remember the night we were allowed back into our apartment. I wanted to box up my most important possessions and keep them in my car as if I thought the building was going to catch fire again. My home didn't feel safe anymore and it wouldn't for several weeks. It would take a long time for us to hear anything about what caused the fire. Last I heard, a space heater was to blame, but I don't know for sure. In the days that followed, the fire was featured on the front page of the local paper. The family that lived just down the hall from us were featured in the picture. The article spelled out details that I had already heard. It labelled the guy that lived below the fire as a hero for attempting to save the lady upstairs. It was a valiant effort, but there was nothing he could have done without endangering himself. I feel sorry for him, and I often wonder if the guilt keeps him up at night. Sometimes I think about the lady who passed away in this building. I listen to a lot of ghost stories, so I wonder if a spirit haunts this place. Her sudden and horrifying death would be the sort of thing to make a ghost linger on earth, wouldn't it? So many things left unfinished. Regardless, I hope she's at peace and I hope that my neighbours have been able to find some semblance of peace as well. Four months later, we've regained a sense of normalcy. Things are back to how they were before. If you ignore the orange tops around the side of the exterior, the restoration vans that come and go every day and the security guards stationed in the lobby, the damaged wing is still closed while they try and sort out the asbestos situation. 
But for those of us who live on the other end of the building, things are relatively normal. I hope they stay that way. Number two, the glitch in the matrix in my school. This isn't exactly a horrifying story, so don't get disappointed if you're not terrified. For background, I'm a 15 year old Irish fella called Ross. I go to school in Ireland. I am now in third year. At the start of second year, I knew a fella who joined the school. I was in charge of showing him around and we've been good friends ever since. He is Portuguese and his name is Diego. I call him Tig for this story. His school bag is fairly small, bright red bag. He is a bit shorter than me. His hair is quite short and brown in colour. This will become important momentarily. One day, I was upstairs in my school. It was break time and I was going to my group's usual spot. I turned in corner and saw Tig walking along the hallway. This was weird because at the distance I was from him, I would have seen him come up the stairs. I didn't think much of it at the time. I sped up to catch up to him. There was another corner coming up. He rounded it and I followed suit, except he wasn't there. There was a staircase going back down and two bathrooms, one for lad and one for lassies, but no Tig. Considering how close I was behind him, he would have had to sprint towards and then jump down the stairs or jog into the bathroom. If he went for the stairs, I would have heard. He must be in the bathroom, I thought. I sat at the bench and waited. Tig was the first other person in our group to arrive. He rounded the corner and left his bag down. The realization hit me hard. He wasn't in the bathroom. I asked him if he had already been up there to which he answered that he hadn't. He had no reason to lie. Now, I know what you're all thinking. It was someone else. First of all, the person I saw looked the exact same as my friend from the back. Second of all, no one else in the school has that bag, to my knowledge. I haven't seen anyone else with it. That's it. Third, the only place the person could have gone without sprinting down the stairs, which I would probably catch a glimpse of anyway, would be the bathroom. No one came out of the bathroom that I didn't see enter it. Finally, my friend is a fairly distinct character. Not many people have the same body build as him. Like I said at the start, it's not exactly terrifying, but I do believe it to be due to a glitch in the matrix. Number three, the doll in the storage room. When I was younger, I'd go visit my grandparents all the time. They lived in a one floor house with an unfinished basement. I never liked it down there. It felt small for a big basement. There was a little door down there that was for storage and I always got a horrible feeling when going close to it. And let me add that this was a newer house that was about 6 years old. Now during the time I was about 6 or 7, I felt so uncomfortable going down there even when I was with someone I didn't like it. I remember going down there with my grandma to help with something. She had to run upstairs because someone rang the doorbell. She said she would be right back even though she knew how I felt about being alone down there. Brian nodded and said, okay. She was gone and I was alone and I started to get a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. I didn't move and I didn't want to. Even though the lights were on, now this is where everything started happening and it still gives me chills. The lights started to flicker and I started to hear noises and what sounded like talking and it was not coming from upstairs but in the storage room. I heard someone say my name. Here is the part that freaks me out the most. The voice sounded like my grandma. I was confused as hell. How am I hearing her when she is upstairs? I didn't want to move but, my, but me being the curious one I am, I started moving toward the storage room door. The closer I got, the worse the bad feeling came. 
When I got to the door, the lights turned off in the basement. I wanted to run upstairs and hide. Go home somewhere that wasn't the basement. I heard my name again for the second time. My grandma's voice asking me to open the door to help her. So I did and I regret it. I couldn't see anything, it was pitch black. I couldn't hear anything but faint laughing that felt like forever. But then the laughing stopped and the lights turned back on in the basement and I felt a little bit better with the lights back on. But the downside, I could see a little in the storage room. I saw a small clown doll in the storage room and my grandma hates clowns with passion and wants nothing to do with them. So why is there a clown doll? I have no damn idea. Then the lights turned on in the storage room. I saw red that looked like blood all over the place. I screamed and blacked out and the next thing I knew I was laying on the couch. My grandma looking at me and asking if I was okay. I have no idea if that was real or a dream, but it sure as hell felt real. If you have any ideas, please let me know. Well now I'm going to be reviewing the stories and mentioning the thanking, mentioning and thanking the authors uh, for letting me use their story in the video. So the first story is by AVI Gabs and the title was 4AM Fire. Now this was not a scary horror story, but it was a very sad story uh, about a fire that burned a lady. I hope this closure for the family members of the lady and I hope she is at peace. There's not much to say here and there's not much to review, but it's just a very sad story. Now the second story is by Elfinera and the title is The Glitch in the Matrix in My School. Now this was a very interesting read, I liked it. It was short. To the point but beautifully written um, meaning the way everything happened um, and to be honest I don't think it's a glitch in the matrix it could be a skinwalker they can shape shift um, so I don't really think it's a glitch in the matrix I think you saw I guess a clone but a bad clone of your friend so I guess that's what it is so I, I rate this a clone out of 10 okay there's no rating for this they're all good stories if uh, I'm just like reviewing them to be honest now the third story is by leader of the Decepticons. Okay, leader of the Decepticons. I don't know why it took me so long to say that. Now the title is the doll in the storage room. Now this one is very, very creepy because you know demon dolls are scary. Like I said, there are two things that are really scary in this world: demon girls and demon dolls. Okay, both of them are very creepy and scary. And to add on top of that, the demon doll is a clown. So you know. Hence, uh, was was the um, the eight clown? So yeah, I don't think I think we should stay clear from clowns and definitely not make them into dolls. And actually, that's a good idea. Is there a movie with a clown doll? We've had doll movies, scary doll movies, but I don't think we've had a clown doll movie. I think that that needs to go into the works. Uh, I rate this uh, a dollar out of ten, as you guessed. Now, thank you all for listening. I'm going to leave Mr. Midnight to do the outro. So take care. Well my children, thank you all for listening. I hope this scared you. These stories were terrifying and scary and I hope they filled you with fear and sorrow. I'll see you again very soon. So until then, love the darkness as it always follows.